This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Need to Hone and it's Wednesday, and that means it's time for another Deck History, the series where I look at prominent deck archetypes and trace them from their origins all the way through to the present day. As usual, a poll determined the topic of this video with humans beating out spirits this time around. Human decks are one of many tribal decks, and like most tribal decks, human decks are aggressive, seeking to quickly populate the board and play various cards that give you some sort of payoff for having a lot of creatures of that specific type, in this case humans, in the deck. Human decks have been quite prolific over the years, top aiding major events in standard, historic, pioneer, modern, legacy, and vintage, and in this video we'll take a look at the origins of these various decks and look at how and why they've changed over time. Human decks did not make their first debut until 2012. While human is the most plentiful of all creature types today, and by a wide margin, it didn't actually exist as a creature type in Magic until the game was around a decade old. It was first introduced in 2003's Mirrodin, and it was later retroactively added to a whole bunch of cards in 2007's Grand Creature Type update, which went back through all the cards in Magic's past and gave them updated creature types so that things were more consistent. Even after making this debut and getting added to a whole bunch of older cards though, humans didn't really have any tribal support for several more years until the release of Innistrad in 2011. Innistrad is very tribal focused and the green-white color pair on the plane is very much focused on humans. So from that point on, humans started to receive tribal support fairly regularly. Human decks first showed up in Magic in 2012 as a result of this newfound support in Innistrad. So let's take a look first at Standard Humans during Innistrad Standard as this was the first place we saw a human deck emerge. Deniz Rashid was the first to pilot a deck with human in its name to a top 8 at a major event. The deck was basically a Delver deck with a human sub-theme. Delver decks tend to be more on the control side of things than on the aggressive side. However, this deck did make use of Champion of the Parish, a powerful human payoff we're going to see a lot of in this video. All of the deck's creatures were humans, so the champion would grow throughout the game, becoming more and more of a threat, so it basically provided the deck with an additional one drop that became a huge problem that could go alongside Delver. Delver variants that ran Champion of the Parish found some significant success in the first half of 2012. In late 2012, a more human-centric deck emerged when Peter Kelly piloted his green-white humans deck to a top 8 finish at Grand Prix Charleston. His deck did away with the more controlling Delver aspect and was pretty much all in on aggro. In addition to Champion of the Parish, Peter's deck also used Mayor of Averbrook, a human lord that could also transform into Halpak Alpha. The Alpha did give up its ability to be a human lord, but the tokens it could make were good enough that that wasn't really a big deal. The deck could quickly curve out and do a ton of damage thanks to its powerful human payoffs. The deck also ran Cavern of Souls, a card that gave you great mana for all your humans, while also allowing you to ignore counter magic when you cast them. At the tail end of 2012, another new human deck emerged, and this one went in a very different direction. Yuiki Ojita finished in first place at Grand Prix Nagoya with a human reanimator deck. The deck's only human payoff was Angel of Glory's Rise, and you can see how that card would really pay you off for having a bunch of humans. The deck's whole game plan revolved around loading up the graveyard and then reanimating the angel, which would in turn reanimate your graveyard that was loaded up with humans. The deck could then wipe out the opponent's board by reanimating your Is It Static Casters and Nightshade Peddlers, and then you could just win the game with your various other humans who were now on the battlefield. Human Reanimator decks became the premier human decks in Standard for much of 2013. This deck went back to the more aggressive approach, with its only human payoff being Champion of the Parish. By the end of 2013, human decks were pretty much done in Standard as Champion of the Parish rotated out of the format. It would be a few years before human decks would find success again in the format, but find success they did in 2016. These human decks were of the Bant variety. Just like we saw in 2012 and 2013, 2016 standard human decks really only ran a single human payoff, but it was a powerful one. Thalia's Lieutenant was a great reason to jam your entire deck full of humans. Like Champion of the Parish, it can get larger throughout the game, gaining a plus one plus one counter every time a human enters the battlefield under your control, but it does more than that, and that's what makes it really great. Champion of the Parish, as good as it was, was not a good late game top deck, as it would often just be a 1-1 and take a while to get big enough to be relevant, but the Lieutenant was great early or late, because it also put a plus one plus one counter on each of your humans when it entered the battlefield, something that was capable of really reshaping the 
the board. This deck also had access to the powerful Collected Company, which you could use to help find your lieutenants and other toolbox creatures. The success of these new standard human decks was fairly short-lived, though. Thalia's Lieutenant rotated out of standard in early 2017, and because it was the key card in the deck, that meant the end of human decks in standard, and we haven't seen any new human decks emerge since then. However, humans did continue to find success in other formats. Let's move now to modern, the format where humans have enjoyed their most significant and consistent success. The first modern human decks emerged in 2017. Ivan de Castro Sanchez piloted his Coral Helm human deck to a top eight at Grand Prix Birmingham that year, and in this deck, you can see a lot of familiar faces. Because Modern had a much larger card pool, the deck was able to run basically all the human payoffs that had found success in the standard versions of the deck, including Champion of the Parish, Mayor of Averbrook, and Thalia's Lieutenant. The deck also made use of Collected Company, so that it could find the creatures it really wanted. One interesting feature of the deck is that it also ran a powerful two-card combo. It could combine Knight of the Reliquary with Retreat to Coral Helm. Those two cards combined to allow you to throw all the lands in your deck in the graveyard, making the knight absolutely massive. An additional important feature was that the knight also let you run a bunch of singleton toolbox lands. This type of human deck did not find sustained success in modern, though. However, in late 2017, a new kind of human deck emerged, five color humans. The precursor of that deck emerged at a Magic Online challenge on October 15th, 2017. While no new human decks had really been printed, Ixalan featured an important new land that paid you off for going hard in one tribe, Unclaimed Territory. The Territory, plus Cavern of Souls, gave the deck really great mana and allowed it to go four colors. That's right, at first the deck was not a five color deck, but only four. This version of the deck doesn't have any red cards in it, but we'll get there. A new human from Ixalan was also important for this deck, Kite Sail Freebooter. The Freebooter gave the deck a highly disruptive human that could really undo the opponent's plan, while also bringing reasonably efficient stats that would get boosted by the various human payoffs in the deck. The day after that deck top aided the Modern Challenge, Magic YouTuber Magic Aids posted a video that went even deeper on this multicolored angle, also adding Ancient Ziggurat to the mix, and this quickly caught on. Now the deck had access to 12 lands that could produce mana of any color for all of its humans, and that really made it so the deck could go full on five color. And humans are so plentiful in Magic that this really powered up the deck, allowing it to just run all the best humans it could. Let's take a look at some of the first five color human decks to put up top eights at major events. In 2018, these modern human decks began a period of dominance in the format that really hasn't ended even today. At Pro Tour Arrivals of Ixalan that year, two five color human decks finished in the top eight. Let's take a look at Andrea Mengucci's version of the deck. Now that the deck had easy access to all five colors, the deck added red to the mix running Mantis Rider. The Rider would normally be very difficult for a five color deck to cast early, but this deck's mana was so good that it was no problem at all. It could even get it done on turn two with Noble Hierarch. Another important inclusion in the deck was Aether Vial. This was another innovation first introduced by Magic Aids, and it allowed the deck to adopt some of the disruptive strategies of Hate Bear and Death and Taxes decks, since it could now put creatures into play at instant speed. Of course, it also gave you the ability to play more humans than is normally possible in a single turn. This was particularly spicy with creatures like Kitesail Freebooter, Meddling Mage, and Reflector Mage, who could really alter the opponent's plans. As you can see, the deck runs no non-creature spells other than the Vile, and this is because the deck's mana is pretty bad when you aren't casting humans, but the deck can make up for that with all those humans who have spell-like effects. This type of human deck would find some pretty significant success in the format throughout 2018, with the deck only undergoing some fairly minor changes that year. The biggest of these changes was the inclusion of the newly printed Militia Bugler, which could basically always draw a card when it entered the battlefield, and generally you also got some really nice card selection, something that's nice when you're running a bunch of disruptive creatures. If we fast forward to today and take a look at a human deck that top aided an event earlier this month, you can see that the deck still hasn't changed a whole lot. One important exception to this is Imperial Recruiter, which is now legal in Modern thanks to a reprint in Modern Horizons 2. The Recruiter can tutor up any creature in the deck, and that's a powerful thing. This deck also utilizes the recently printed Adeline Resplendent Cathar. The deck is so jammed full of creatures that Adeline tends to be quite large, and the fact that she makes a human when you attack means that you also get immediate boosts for your Champions of the Parish and Thalia's Lieutenants. Humans are going to be a factor in modern going forward. Their ability to aggressively curve out so many impressive creatures while also disrupting the opponent gives it a shot in just about any metagame. 
While modern is the format where humans have had the most consistent success, human decks have found plenty of success in other formats too. First, let's look at Legacy. Human decks first started to show up in Legacy in 2018, and in 2019 they started to put up some impressive finishes. As you can see, this deck does not vary a whole lot from what we've already seen in Modern, in spite of the fact that Legacy has a much larger card pool. However, there is one very powerful human legal in Legacy that isn't legal in Modern, and that's Mother of Runes. She's a powerful one-drop who comes with the ability to grant protection to creatures, something that is quite potent since it can either protect creatures or allow them to get through unblocked. If we take a look at a top 8 at a Legacy Challenge earlier this year, you can see that the core of the deck has remained largely intact, though it has been joined by a couple of new humans, Elite Spellbinder and Charming Prince. These two cards give you a couple of new humans with nice utility abilities, with the Spellbinder disrupting the opponent and the Prince giving you a choice between three effects that are good in specific situations. Human decks will continue to be a factor in Legacy going forward, although they aren't anywhere close to as ubiquitous and dominant as they are in Modern. Let's move now to Vintage, a format where human decks have only had a little bit of success. In 2019, JD Phoenix top aided the Magic Online Vintage Championship with a human deck. It runs a lot of cards we've already seen, but there are a few humans in the deck that are particularly good in Vintage that aren't that good in other formats. In particular, Lavinia Azorius Renegade and Scab Clan Berserker. Lavinia hoses any deck trying to ramp mana, which is basically all of them in Vintage, and the Berserker punishes players for playing non-creature spells, which, again, is pretty much all of the decks in Vintage. Right now, this is the only major top 8 for a human deck in the format. Now that we've covered Standard, Modern, and the Eternal formats, let's take a look at a couple of younger formats, and formats where human decks have only emerged in the very, very recent past. First, let's look at Pioneer, where an Orzhov Humans deck has shown up just in the last few months. Unsurprisingly, the deck is focused on aggression, running lots of powerful 1 and 2 drop humans. In Pioneer, Thalia's Lieutenant is legal, so that's the deck's big human payoff, but there are a couple of others. One of them is Dire Tactics, which is a very powerful removal spell with no downside if you have a human in play, and this deck pretty much always does. The deck also uses Rally the Ranks, which is a creature type specific anthem. Humans seem like they have a good shot at building on their very recent success in Pioneer. Humans have also found some success in Historic in the very, very recent past. At the Innistrad Championship, Christian Hauk piloted a green-white collected humans deck to a top 8 finish. As the name suggests, the deck makes use of Collected Company, a card we've already seen in this video. We also recently made a return to Innistrad, which has introduced a few new human payoffs to go alongside Thalia's Lieutenant. The biggest of these was Hamlet Vanguard, which enters the battlefield as an absolutely massive creature and comes with Ward, so killing it isn't that easy. It's also something you can hit with Collected Company that is quite impressive. Another couple of important new humans for the deck were Esper Sentinel and Brutal Cathar. The Sentinel makes your opponent pay a tax when they play non-creature spells or you get to draw a card, and that tax can get costly, thanks to plus one plus one counters. Meanwhile, the Cathar provides a powerful Oblivion Ring effect on a creature that flips into quite the attacker, and it's another great thing to hit with Collected Company. So, human decks have found success in a whole lot of formats. So far, Modern is definitely the format where they've been the most important, but the future looks bright for human decks, especially in Pioneer and Historic. Well, that's the history of human decks. If you want to have a say in the topic of next week's video, don't forget to vote in the poll on the community tab. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. Also, if you aren't subscribed, consider doing it. If you want to catch up on the other 25 deck history videos, you should see the playlist on your screen shortly. Lastly, if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me and the channel, you can on Patreon. Thanks for watching.